You know what? The farthest man-made object in space is Voyager 1. 1977, this spacecraft was launched to explore the interstellar space and that's what it is doing. And I would say very honestly, still it is giving some signals back to NASA. And yes. Now this begs a question. Did Voyager 1 took so much fuel with it that it is trying to just travel for past 77, right? I mean, for past 45 years approx, is it still traveling and taking so much fuel, is it? Because the reason the question comes in our mind is because we have seen in at least the space around us. If you want to move, you need fuel. If you want to drive your car, you need fuel. If you want to drive your bike, you need fuel. So did Voyager 1 have so much fuel that in 45 years it's just continuing to use that fuel, is it? Now, with this question, let me welcome you all in today's session of Inertia and Newton's First Law of Motion. Let's understand this very simple, very easy topic with an interesting question. Did Voyager 1 took so much fuel with it so that it can continue its journey for past about 45 years? Is it? Let's understand this, come on! But before that, people who have not yet subscribed to this, the Baiju's MLP session, the package of three sessions, which was of 399, now it is free. But you know what? It is not free always. Till 17 July, it will be free. And that's why it becomes really important that you subscribe to it right now. Because you know what? Everybody else has done it. It might be just you who has not used it. And you know what? After 17th, you might be just the only one who forgot to use it. Go ahead, check it out. There is a link in the description, the shop.byjuice.com. Click on that, use the code YTFREE and the 399 session will become free for you. And in this, the good thing is you will get a two teacher advantage. You will also get one to one guidance from personal mentors and interactive classes, live classes. But you can say, sir, these are also live, no? Yes, but you know what? The best thing about this, my personal attention goes to this particular point. That is, you get classes as per your scheduled time, as per your convenient time, I would say, because that is of the most important essence right now. We all have, uh, we all are free at different, different time slots. I wish if there was a way in which I could schedule my class at this particular time because I'm busy at this, you can. With this model, you can. Go ahead, check out the two teacher model and then only decide if it's good or bad, right? Come on, check it out, it's free. All right, people, join the Telegram group, very important. I'll give the PDF of the session, the notes in the Telegram group. So make sure the link in the description is, of the, uh, is there of the Telegram group. You please subscribe to it, join that channel. It's important, I would say. All right, chalo, come on. A push or a pull acting on an object is what we call a force. Simple. You all have learned this definition before also. What is force? That is the push or pull. Nice, we all know this. Correct, nice. Now, you know what? Long ago, Aristotle, we all know, he was a great, uh, great thinker, right? So Aristotle said, rest is a natural state of all objects. Why would Aristotle think like this? Because we all know it's not true. There is a reason he thought about this. Because whatever you do, things come to rest, right? If I just throw anything, it will come to rest. If I catch it, it will come to rest. Catching, you can say, sir, you applied force, you know, you did something. But if you just take a ball and just make it to roll away in the ground, on the ground, it will stop after some point of time, no? That's why. Aristotle said, you know what? If a body wants to come at rest, it is the natural state of a body. And he was not wrong because the ideas back at that time were governed with observation around you. And this is the one of the most common observation, right? It's one of the most common observation you will see around you. Things stop after some time. Yes, that's why he said rest is, you know, uh, it is the natural state of body. Okay, but you know what? People believed him. Yes, because he was a great man. He was a great thinker. But there was someone who came afterwards, but started questioning the ideas. And he was Galileo Galilei. We all remember him for the legend of the Pisa experiment, right? So Galileo said, you know what? Maybe rest is not the natural state of all objects. For this, he used something called as Galileo Rams. So he said, if I drop a ball from this initial height, if I just make it to roll on this, on this ramp, the ball will roll and it will keep on rolling until and unless it will reach the same height, right? So he said, 
maybe it's not the rest the the body is looking for the body is looking for to attain the same height in a way he was trying to he was trying to object to the idea of the rest being the natural state so initial height he said if i drop it from initial height the body will come and reach and will not stop until unless it will reach the same height because he used one ramp where the height was more here and less here so what happened ball came went and fell down from the other side yes because it wanted to reach the same height it could not because it was shorter it came out okay then he said what if i take a ramp in which this is this is the slope and then the ramp is plain and this was a very long ramp so he said you know what the ball rolls and then continues rolling for a very long time so maybe rest is not the natural state and yes for this he tried another another mo more experiments also so that's why he started objecting to this idea and he said there is something which is working and today we all know what it is right the usual suspect so on think why does everything stop after you give it a push after you make that thing start to move away after some time the body starts to stop why it is because of the one usual suspect we all know this as a necessary evil it is the friction yes the friction makes the bodies to stop and you know what you can't avoid friction here at least the place you are in on earth you cannot avoid maybe you can try smoothing things out you can maybe you can try oiling maybe you can try spilling water but still friction you cannot just try and make it zero that's true right so we call it the necessary evil so friction is there it slows down everything basically it is applying a force on that moving body and that's why the moving body is slowly slowly coming to rest true okay now we said it is the friction the frictional force acts opposite to the direction of motion all right now newton came and he said you know what let me give you one law and this is a universal law the law was the newton's first law sometimes you also end up calling it as the law of inertia what is inertia we'll talk about it don't worry so a body at rest will remain at rest and a body in motion will remain in motion unless it is acted upon by an external unbalanced force it's okay see when you are trying to cram this definition it will look complicated sir it was body at rest will remain at rest and the body at motion will remain in motion until and unless it is acted upon by external unbalanced force first of all understand this you know what cramming won't help you can just rephrase this law but essence should remain same law is saying if a body is at rest however long you stay at this body it will remain at rest if a body is moving it will keep on moving in the same direction with the same speed until and unless what you do until and unless some external or i would say net external force acts on that body because if there is a net external force means the body will change its state right so this is what this law is trying to say we call it the law of inertia the newton's first law right so if you just look at it again it will make sense it will remain at rest or it will continue to move with same velocity or you can also say it as uh, will continue to move at same speed at the same direction right until unless there is a net external force acting on the body all right so this is about newton's first law okay now we just talked about it is also called as law of inertia sometimes you know what this is an answer of your question but sir why does a body continue to move its state you said it's okay it's a law that until unless i apply net, net external force the body will continue to be at rest or move with constant velocity but why right if you ask this question the answer i would like to give you is inertia what is inertia it is a property of a body that wa that wants it to maintain its rest so one of them is called as inertia of rest the property of a body which wants a body to maintain its state of rest better ho kahin jao mat be chill right this is inertia of rest remains in state of rest until an unbalanced force acts on the body okay so inertia of rest right what is inertia it's a property right inertia of rest property of a body to try and keep the body at rest this is inertia of rest fine now there is something called as inertia of motion now what do we say it is a property of a body if a, if a body is already moving right so we say this body has inertia which inertia inertia of motion which means it wants to 
keep on moving, right? So what is inertia? Inertia is something which makes a body lazy. In terms of, one, one, one more thing, just figuratively lazy, not just lazy like we do, right? So it, it wants to make the body lazy in terms of, it doesn't want the body to change its state. If the body is at rest, it wants the body to be at rest. We call it inertia of rest. If the body is moving, inertia wants the body to keep moving. This is called as inertia of motion. Fine. So, remains in state of uniform motion until an unbalanced force acts on the body. Fine. Okay. Nice. Same thing. Inertia of direction. With the same logic, you can also think, if a body is going in one direction, what does inertia say? You know what? Keep going. Chill, don't worry. Just keep going in the same direction. Right? So inertia is saying inertia of direction. It says remains in same direction until an unbalanced force acts on the body. So got the idea? Inertia of rest, inertia of motion, inertia of direction. So that's why all these inertias are equally simple if you understand the logic. How to rephrase this in your mind, okay? So simply you can say inertia is what makes a body lazy. Sometimes we end up using it in casual language also. You know what, today morning I could not get up. I had so much inertia. This is what we sometimes say. These are the physics jokes, you know, which, which a lot of people don't understand. Alright, so examples of inertia. You have been using the concept of inertia very frequently in your daily life. You might not just realize it. Now, the attachment of fruit when a tree is vigorously shaken. What do you do? If let's say there's a fruit on a tree, what do you do? You come to the tree and... <clears throat> You just move it, right? Or you take the branch of a tree and you shake it. Why? Because you want that fruit to fall down. But why does it fall down? Because the fruit wants to stay at rest. Let's say this is the branch and let's say this is the fruit. Fruit wants to stay at rest, but you just shake the branch. So when you shake the branch, fruit wanted to stay at rest, it falls down. Got it? So this is what happens. You have used this. You have tried this. Next. Coming out of dust when we hit carpet with sticks. Now, this is very common, right? Uh, whenever, let's say, you bring out an old carpet, which has not been washed out, right? So, uh, if, you, if you haven't washed it, you just want to dust it. What do you do? You take the carpet, you just hang it, and then you take a, a stick and just start beating it. Tuck, 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 right? This is what we do. Same thing with mattresses also. This is what we do, right? So, why, why does the dust come out? Because this is the carpet, this is the stick, this is the dust on it. When you hit it, the carpet goes back, but the dust which was here still is at its place because of inertia and then it falls down. We know this, right? Okay. Body uh, moves forward when we crash a bike. If let's say you have had this, I hope you haven't, but still, if you had this experience, please don't try it at home. What will happen? If your bike is going nicely smoothly, suddenly either you break or you hit something, right? If your bike crashes, your body moves forward. And same thing you might have experienced in car also, in buses also. So these are very common examples you all have seen, right? Why? Because your body was in a state of motion, still wants to be in a state of motion. And this is what we call as inertia of motion, right? So that's why. Okay. Now this is something which is really nice to watch. You have seen these in the shot. There is a shot on inertia, right? On, on our Baiju's channel. Go ahead if you haven't watched it out. But look at the colors. Just for a second, look at these colors. There was color on the racket. Racket just went away, but the colors stayed there in the shape of the racket. What is this? This is what we call as inertia. Specifically, what inertia? Rest, motion, direction. Think. Come on, think. Rest. Obviously rest, right? True. Nice. Now, it is advised to run in zigzag lines to escape from a charging elephant. Have you heard this thing? So, I hope, first of all, that you haven't encountered with a charging or an angry elephant because that is pretty dangerous. But still, if whenever we encounter a charging elephant, it is advised, you know, if you haven't heard about this, let me tell you, it is advised to not run in a straight direction, to run like this, here, then here, then here, then here, then here. You might feel, sir, it feels counterintuitive, no? If I go like this, the elephant will catch me faster. Yes, but you know what? Elephant is not, at least you, we are thinking you are smarter than the elephant. Why? Because when you change your direction, elephant changes direction. When you change direction, elephant wants to change the direction. You change direction, elephant again wants to change the direction. But you know what? 
for you changing your state is easier than for the elephant there is a reason for it because do all bodies have the same inertia the answer would be no no it is not true can someone think of what is that measure which tells you you know what this body is little less lazy this body is little more lazy kind of thing again figuratively i'm saying lazy right this body has less inertia this body has more inertia this body can change its state easily compared to this body what is it come on intuitively we all can talk about this it is not weight if you are thinking weight you are not entirely wrong but still i would you know i would say it mass it is the mass which tells you this body has more inertia now why elephant was face was facing more difficulty in changing its direction because elephant is much much heavier than you right so you being a less massed person you can change your direction easily compared to the elephant because elephant when it gains momentum i would not call momentum because you will be confused now forget about momentum whenever elephant has with so much mass starts starts moving in one direction if you want to change the direction no it will need more force because it has more inertia right so that's why for you it is okay so that's why elephant will get tired easily it will stop chasing you and that's why we say go in zigzag line so mass is the measure of inertia if more mass a body has right mass is the important if mass increases inertia increases right so inertia depending on mass very important very frequently asked question in a lot of exams so please please make sure you remember this mass of the body tells you how how uh, how much inertia this body will have right how much difficulty this body will face in changing its state of rest or motion or direction fine all right now coming back to our question we started with the journey of the farthest man made object that is voyager 1 we said it is did it had so much fuel now think did it really requires fuel is it think you know what voyager 1 is a space probe launched in 1977 to study the outer planets we have discussed about this it will continue travel through space for thousands of years without stopping do you know how much velocity it has we said no if a body is moving if there is no net force it will continue to move inertia of motion do you remember we have studied this in this session itself it is moving with a velocity of about 60 1000 kilometers per hour isn't it insane think about this right it's an insane number 60000 kilometers per hour never heard about this right so this will keep on moving because in space you know what you don't have a net external force you don't have friction so that's why if you give a slight push to a body the body just keeps on moving you might have seen asteroids or you might have seen this in some movies right a body just floating in space if you give it a slight push it will just keep on moving so this is the reason voyager 1 is still moving it only uses fuel whenever it wants to change its course it will right it will just keep on moving with the same velocity in the same direction until unless it wants to change the direction or stop why would it stop right if it wants to change the direction it will use some fuel then only otherwise it will not use it will just keep on moving straight not problem right because of inertia so that's the reason we talked about voyager 1 and now you understand we don't require fuel to move in space where there is no gravity no external force you will just keep on giving one push one blast from the from the uh, propeller uh, not propeller i would say from the uh, jet and then you will just keep on moving forward right so that's why this is the answer it doesn't require fuel there now there is one homework question for you why do we need to hit the ketchup bottle from back causing sauce to splash out think about it it's again a very generous or a general life example right not generous right think about it it's a very easy to think example give me the answers in the chat or not the chat actually give me the answers in the comment section i want to look at it and please again i'm telling you be a part of the telegram group very important i'll give the notes of this session in the telegram group and with this you know we have got you covered don't worry about this we are taking care of you we'll cover everything nicely and easily all right and if you think this session was good please make sure you like to it please make sure you share this to your friends and please also make sure you subscribe to the channel because you know what 
everything is being covered we have a lot of things which are ongoing right so make sure you are a part of everything please like share and subscribe and with this i would say take care keep studying and you know what we'll meet again in the next session thank you